I'm a musician myself. I play the guitar and I play synthesizer and I'm learning the trumpet, <laughs> which is a, a stupid thing to try and learn um, in a small flat in London because um, it's so loud, but uh, it's, it's very fun to do that. I'm Richard Phillips and I'm a climate change specialist at Julie's Bicycle, uh, working specifically with the music industry on taking action on the climate and environmental crises. Julie's Bicycle is a not-for-profit that works with arts and culture um, on tackling the climate crisis um, and we work right across arts and culture from music to theatres and galleries uh, and visual art as well. My role is specifically within music. Um, and I work across the full scope of the music industry from uh, the live side with venues and festivals and events through to the recorded side with labels um, and artists as well. And as also work with, with touring parties. Um, so the full breadth of the music industry. Um, and before Julie's Bicycle, I was working as a sustainability consultant within other industries. Um, so I've got a lot of experience within sustainability and uh, how different businesses can take action on climate change. I'm a musician myself. I play the guitar and I play synthesizer and I'm learning the trumpet, <laughs> which is a, a stupid thing to try and learn um, in a small flat in London because um, it's so loud, but uh, it's, it's very fun to do that. Music has this, this platform and this, this opportunity to inspire wider societal change, which has always been the case with, with other issues as well, things like civil rights. Uh, in America and, and there are other examples as well um, and I think that's where the opportunity lies as a musician um, within the, this whole climate agenda is to connect and to inspire that wider societal change that we need. There's also the other side of it which is musicians being impacted um, by climate change so you know we're lucky uh, to be where we are and we're not on the front line um, in Western Europe of climate impacts yet um, but there are many people who are who are already uh, suffering those consequences and when you think of um, you know indigenous communities and um, uh, uh, just a lot of musicians that are on the front line of the climate crisis we're literally seeing that culture being lost um, and we're seeing a medium being lost purely because you know we're, we're losing places to climate impacts um, and then I, I guess right here in in western europe we are seeing those impacts with there are festivals within the uk which have been cancelled because of severe weather events uh, Boardmasters, which is a festival in the UK, was cancelled in 2019 uh, for, for very uh, bad weather. Uh, and it's happening in the northeast of England as well, where the very strong winds have cancelled uh, festivals and events. So I think it's not just kind of an opportunity for musicians to uh, connect with audiences and to inspire that wider societal change, but they're also being impacted um, by sheerly just where you can play the event. Um, and if you're if we're still going to be able to have uh, live music events uh, when the weather becomes so unpredictable and so extreme, I think particularly for, for festivals. I think that the, the, the creative industries and the cultural sector are just starting to, to take the lead on this. Um, I, there's always more that can be done, but I think the cultural sector is in an interesting place where it has this opportunity to platform and amplify those voices that otherwise wouldn't be heard, so those voices that are on the front line of climate impacts today. Um, and I think that's a really powerful thing. It's a really powerful opportunity, again, to, to highlight and raise this awareness of the impacts that are already occurring and the change that needs to take place, um, you know, urgently needs to take place now. And in terms of other industries, I think, um, you know, I think there's a lot of catching up that needs to be done um, to think about climate justice and to bring this within you know, if it's a, a corporate sustainability strategy, it's not just about having decarbonisation and just uh, having these measures to reduce emissions and, and that's it, almost like a, an accounting exercise. You actually need to bring in the human story um, and the impacts that not just um, climate change is having, but the, the solutions have as well. The, the solutions are unequal. So you can't just have a sustainability strategy that's just focused on net zero and just focused on reducing emissions. It needs to be a climate justice strategy that incorporates the impacts that are felt 
differently by different uh, people within society as well. The, the cultural industries are starting to think about this now. Um, I think there is still a long, long way to go. Um, but there is this great opportunity there to, to bring in those voices that maybe other industries don't quite have like that natural opportunity to bring in those voices yet. Um, not to say that's kind of why they're not doing it, but I think the cultural industries can really take a lead on it and, and lead by example and show what can be done for the rest of, for, for other businesses and other sectors. There, there are already some um, common challenges that both the music sector face and other sectors. Margins are getting squeezed and there's very often the first thing to go is any initiatives on sustainability because people perceive it very often as this kind of nice to have thing or this bolt on. Um, and this is a particular problem within the music industry uh, because margins are so tight anyway for venues, for touring artists and, and things like that. Um, but I, I guess the, the key point really is that sustainability um, is it actually, it's actually a bit of a myth that it's going to cost you money. It's actually something that uh, either saves you money uh, in the near term or at least in, in the long term. So if you think about the energy crisis at the minute, it's become way more expensive to be uh, being fueled by, by fossil fuels, to have your energy from a fossil fuel provider. Um, it's actually because of the situation uh, in the Ukraine uh, that's, that's caused energy prices to uh, increase significantly. And that's a problem with the energy markets, but generally, if you're already um, if you're already on renewable energy, then that is the cheaper way to go. Um, if you're already on that uh, that contract, and it's only going to get cheaper uh, as time goes on. So that's just one example of the fact that sustainability actually is going to be cost saving rather than something that increases your costs. And I think there is the other side to it as well, where there's a massive opportunity um, to connect with with audiences that want to buy more sustainable products, to put it bluntly. And then the other point I would say to that is that there is too much focus, I think, at the minute on capturing every last bit of data, when actually Julie's Bicycle has already done the work and other organisations have looked into this as well, uh, so that we already know where the big impacts are. So one of the main benefits of carbon footprinting normally is that you can identify the big hotspot areas that you need to take action. But we already know that for touring and for venues um, and for events, it's about audience travel and it's about power. Um, there are other things that you need to focus on as well, like, like food and drink that's being put on and, and artist travel. But really, the, the big, we know what the big issues are. So there's no need for everyone to be really accurately measuring that as a baseline. We know what the baseline is. So the carbon footprint needs to go alongside action so that you can see the difference that you're making uh, through your initiatives. It's not just about measuring it just to understand your footprint in the first instance. It's to measure your progress over time. And the progress will only come through investment in action, not just through measurement. So that's what I would say directly to the camera, <laughs> is carbon footprinting is a tool for, for action. Um, it is not action in itself.